at Queenship Game Studio, and today is Queenship uh, Queenship's first Queenship Q and A. Uh, so we're going to be doing this once a month. Um, so feel free to submit your questions if you would like at uh, queenshipgamestudio at gmail.com, or you can pop them right here in the chat queue, and hopefully I'll be able to get to them. Uh, so I've got a few questions that I've gotten uh, from some folks today that I'm going to answer. Um, some of them might be a little rambly, so you know, forgive me for that. Um, the first question is, why focus on games about mental health? Um, I think this is both a personal and a professional question. Um, so full disclosure, I suffer from mental illness. Um, so it is a issue that has been near and dear to me for many, many years. Um, the dialogue about mental illness is changing for the better, I think, but there is still a lot of stigma about, you know, treatment and, um, you know, medication and, you know, hospitals and all that sort of thing. Um, so really, I care about changing that narrative on a personal level. Um, hi, Eddie. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, so I care a lot personally about that. Um, professionally, I feel like, oh, actually, no, I know that there is a, a growing intersection between mental health and uh, games, um, sometimes referred to as gamified mental health tools. So I genuinely believe that the products that we can make um, can help people manage their wellness, their recovery, their day-to-day -day functioning. Um, so that's, that's really why. Um, hopefully, if you've already played uh, our first game, Open Spaces, uh, it's helped you in some way. Um, but we're hoping to make a lot more games that will help people with a variety of diagnoses, de depression, schizophrenia, post-traumatic stress, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I guess that sort of answers that. Mohua! <laughs> Mohua is in the chat, everybody. She's one of my colleagues at Queenship. She's awesome, so be nice to her. Um, what games do you plan on making in the future? We have a lot of ideas, <laughs> um, which I think is sort of occasionally a fence that we have to climb over because we have so many ideas and we, we always have to figure out what's the most important thing to focus on right now. Um, so we're working on several projects right now. Um, the first, and this is sort of front row, is the app Return to Spaces, which we are intending Return to Spaces. Return to Self, I am tired. Can you tell? <laughs> um, return to Self, which we are intending to be an app um, that helps users manage anxiety and panic attacks um, and even just like, you know, everyday anxious um, symptoms. So we're working heavily on that right now. We're very much in the you know, mid-production phase of that. Um, we still have a lot of work to do, but we're hoping to have a ship date uh, for that by the end of the summer. So we're very excited. Um, the second is a game called the Shadow Cross, which is an RPG that we are building sort of concurrently while we work on Return to Self um, about the experience of depression. Um, depression is my main diagnosis, so this is a project that is very important to me. Um, and depression is, aside from anxiety, the most commonly diagnosed mental illness on the planet. Um, so chances are even if you don't have depression, you know someone that does, you're married to someone, related to someone, work with someone, taught or are taught by someone that has depression. Um, and it's a difficult illness to navigate. So we're hoping um, you know, to kind of illustrate the symptomology and experience of that cognitive landscape to, to help people. Um, the last is a game about the experience of hallucinations called House of Echoes. Um, so while I was researching uh, this particular phenomenon, um, I learned that hallucinations are surprisingly common as a human experience. Um, most people will experience a hallucination at least once during their lives. Um, and can, it can be brought on by a pretty broad variety of different factors. Um, obviously, there are some mental illnesses that have hallucinations as a symptom. Um, even depression can feature hallucinations as a symptom, um, but excessive stress can do it, lack of sleep, um, grief, you know, if you've lost a friend or a family member or a spouse, 
or even a pet. Um, intense pain can also do it, which was a bit of a surprise. Oh, thanks for sharing that with us, Eddie. Yeah, I, I do remember you. <laughs> it is really great to see you. Um, so yeah, super common. Um, from what I also hear, end of life hallucinations are fairly common. Um, you know, as the brain uh, slowly begins to shut down, um, people report, you know, having you know, um, visions and, you know, auditory experiences that may or may not be hallucinations, who knows? Um, so yeah, super duper common. Um, so what we've tried to do with, with House of Echoes, even though it's sort of on the back burner right now, is illustrate hallucinations in a way that is unsettling without being too frightening. Um, Obviously, you know, individual mileage may vary where hallucinations are concerned. Some people's are very mild. Um, a friend of mine hallucinates fairly regularly, and his most common hallucination is a cat that he just randomly sees out of the corner of his eye or even like right in front of his face from time to time. Um, whereas I've talked to some people who have truly terrifying hallucinations. They will literally see monsters or hear terrifying sounds. Um, Obviously, we're not interested in frightening anyone, um, but we do want to illustrate the disquieting nature of hallucinations and, um, you know, kind of help people, as we did with open spaces, help people um, learn about different methods for management and also about the um, heavy mental impact that frequent hallucinations can have on a person. Um, so definitely encourage uh, everybody to to do some reading on that because you know as as awful as it is to hallucinate, um, it still is a very common phenomenon. So I feel like it's something everybody should really know more about. Um, other projects we have in mind involve um, the pressure of being in the public eye, um, the pressure of bigotry, um, of bullying. So we we have a lot of ideas. Um, we are definitely interested in hearing from folks about what sort of games they personally would like to see. Um, so, you know, feel free to, to toss us your ideas or um, say, hey, you know, this is what I'm struggling with. Have you thought about making a game? Would you make a game, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, because in addition to just making games that can be fun to play, um, our mission is to help people. So if we can help you with what we're producing, excellent. Um, what inspired the creation of Queenship? Whew, that is a story and a half. Um, so I think I, I personally need to begin with my own history as a game enthusiast. Um, so I've been playing video games since I was about five. Um, my, my mother growing up used to sell Avon. How many of y'all ever had an Avon lady growing up? Um, and one year she won a, uh, a Nintendo, a, the original console, as a prize for uh, joining President's Club. President's Club is where, you know, you get like a, num a great number of sales and you get like, you know, awards and all that sort of thing. She had this like line of porcelain Mrs. Albies, who was, you know, the, the founder of the Avon Perfume Company um, for winning President's Club like a million times. So anyway, first was the Nintendo. And then it was, hey, Divine. <laughs> and then it was, um, what, what console did I have after that? I had a original Game Boy, and I had a Game Boy Color, and then I had a Game Boy Advance. <laughs> and then uh, in college, I had a Super Nintendo, and then it, I had a PlayStation 2, and so it just kind of goes on and on. Um, what struck me the most, my main background is in music, as, as some of you might know. Um, but what struck me the most about a lot of the games that I really loved was how incredible the soundscapes were. You know, the sound design, the music, um, the voice acting, if there was, you know, in the next gen video games, um, all of it was really incredible. And eventually, um, I decided to start an ensemble that played video game and film music called Geek Musica. And while I was running that ensemble, I thought, you know, it'd be cool to write music for video games because I really love video game music and I, I kind of bet I could do it. <laughs> so I, uh, I joined up with the Tech Valley Game Space in Troy, New York, 
and I started doing the Ludum Dare uh, game jam challenge. Um, and I loved it. I, I was prepared to hate it, honestly, you know, because like it's a lot of scoping. Um, you've got to really be clear about the kind of project that you want to execute. Um, and you only have a weekend. So like, you start Friday night and you have to have everything submitted, I think, by like you know, 5 p.m. local time on Monday. So it's it's weirdly exhilarating for me to be able to take a project and, you know, from nothing and build something from scratch and, you know, have, even if it's a small, you know, super tiny, tiny game, um, you know, a working, functioning prototype. Marisa, hi! <laughs> Um, so that's, that's how I got started and uh, weirdly enough, that's also how Queen Chip got started. Um, the team that, uh, works, um, including myself with and for Queen Chip met at the game space and the prototype for open spaces was created by, uh, a team, that team and a few others, um, as part of the Ludum Dari game jam. So after we finished it, um, we got an incredible response from the Ludum Dari community, um, more particularly from people who had been diagnosed with anxiety or agoraphobia, which is what the game was about. Um, sorry, I'm just, I'm kind of like reminiscing a little bit because I, I really, I really miss the game space. <laughs> Um, I hope those guys are doing okay right now. I love and miss you too, Marisa. I hope you're doing okay. Um, so anyway, um, we got to talking about, you know, the the reception that we've gotten, <clears throat> excuse me, the comments that we've gotten, um, the fact that it didn't genuinely seem to help people. And I was just like, we should really keep working on this. Um, so we decided to keep working on it and to make a finished product out of it, as opposed to just, you know, a small prototype. Um, and then I said, what if we made games like this all the time? You know, we could, we could really make tools that could help people in the same way that open spaces helped people. So after that, um, it was just really a whirlwind of activity, you know, getting the the LLC paperwork filed and, you know, like looking for funding and setting up all the marketing channels and you know, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's really the inspiration. Um, after that, we we did a uh, game development accelerator program at Rensselaer Polytech, and uh, that was man, that was a trip. Um, it was eight weeks long. And in addition to just, you know, working on the game, um, we got some incredible training from a variety of professionals in, um, you know, in the local community. So we got trained by artists, by, um, I had a lawyer come in and do a presentation. We were trained by business consultants. Um, we had a, I think we had a couple programmers come in. Um, so we just, we had all these different areas in which we were trained pretty intensely, you know, during this accelerator to help us make um, successful businesses, successful game studios, indie game studios. Um, it, shortly after that, we got our first investment, um, and we're, now we're just we're just busy making games. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm hoping that we're going to be around for a pretty long time. Um, you know, I, I love I love the work that we do. It's personally meaningful. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I love the work that we do. I love my team. Um, it's, it's just a really great experience. I, I'm very, very happy with the work that I do. Hi, Steph. Good to see you, babe. Um, so my, my last two questions, and feel free to put in your own, I will answer them if you have questions. Um, the last two questions are actually sort of personal to me, which took me a little by surprise. Um, the first is what my favorite animal is. Um, and because I'm a nerd, I not only have to tell you, I have to give you some historical context. So my favorite animal is the peregrine falcon. And historically, peregrine falcons have been owned by um, the nobility and the royalty as hunting birds. Um, so they are sort of traditional gifts that you get from your, you know, <laughs> the man behind the curtain. They're traditional gifts that you get, you know, for hunting from like, you know, your super rich royal cousin or whatever. Um, 
and their nickname for this reason is the King's Provider, and I always thought that was really cool, um, because falcons can help you hunt, like, small game, anywhere from, like, birds to rabbits, so it's kind of cool. Um, the second question was, where do I get all my jewelry? <laughs> um, if I'm being honest, y'all, I get a lot of my jewelry from Wish. Um, but I also do get a lot of my jewelry from thrift shops. So if you live near thrift or consignment shops, you know, once everything kind of opens up again, it's safe to shop. Definitely check out your local thrift stores because you can find some really cool stuff. I remember once I was in a thrift store and I found an antique ring for like five bucks. And I, not too long after that, I went to an antique store and the woman who owned the shop commented on it. She's like, that really looks like it's that's got to be at least 80 years old you kind of look at it I said sure so I handed it to her and she looked at it for a long time and finally she told me where did you get this and I said I think I got it from Goodwill and she said this is a 1920s era ring <laughs> so I was literally walking around with like a 90 year old ring in my hand that should have sold in an antique shop for like 50 bucks and instead I got it for five so so that's all the questions that I've been given today. Do you guys have questions? I love questions. Also, I'm going to take a drink. Um, everyone say hello to Mohua once again. She is uh, one of my colleagues um, at Queenship. She is our narrative designer, and she does a lot of the uh, editing for our dialogue as well um so yeah definitely ask questions in the chat if you got anything i'll be here for a minute just to kind of yammer into myself <laughs> um actually i have questions for you guys i want to know uh what kind of games you've been playing um since a lot of us have been at home a great deal um tell me about what you've been doing to uh amuse yourself and keep yourself occupied um I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV online. I don't know if you guys play that, but it's pretty awesome. Um, and lots of Stardew Valley, because Stardew Valley is just spectacular, like always. Um, I've also been reading a great deal, and more particularly, I've been reading books about foraging. So I live in London. Um, yeah, I saw Persona 4 just came out on Steam. I live in London, and there's shockingly a ton of green space here, which always surprises people that have never been here. Um, so there's a lot of wild food about. So I'm just kind of learning about, you know, what I can go out and, and you know, gather to make stuff with. Um, staff, to answer your question, um, open spaces right now is available for the PC. Uh, Return to Self will be available um, right now only for Android on Google Play. We're hoping eventually to get it on... Um, Apple, um, you know, the, the mobile iOS, but that's going to take a little bit more time. Um, as much as I hate to, to kind of denigrate them, um, they, they basically want the moon on a platter for you to publish apps in their store. Um, so I don't think it's really going to happen immediately, but we are hopeful because obviously we don't want Apple users to miss out. Um, mo but most of our games are going to be for the PC. Um, we might at some point adapt some of them just for like, you know, a uh, web. Um, but yeah, right now it's PC. We also hope to get some of our games on, you know, the Switch, um, you know, and, and other similar devices eventually. Um, but we're still kind of exploring the process of how that works. What else? I still can't believe the Persona 4 just came out on Steam. It's like, that's so wild. Persona is one of my favorite all-time series, especially 3. I love 3. Um, my partner is playing Persona 5 Royal right now, and it's pretty boss. But the idea of having any of the Persona games on PC is just like, mm, yes! Excellent. Um, obviously, the, there will be announcements when Return to Self is released. Um, so definitely keep your eyes over here. Um, and also, I, I could I could message you. <laughs> oh, on that topic, um, there are a couple of things I should mention. 
Um, we are looking for a few more folks to make pledges to our Patreon. So if you've got a few bucks, you can get like, you know, some secrets and some Easter eggs and all that sort of thing. In addition to helping us make games. And also you can uh, sign up for our mailing list. I will drop a link here in a second. Just give me one minute. Mm -hmm. There you are, MailChimp. Oh, they want me to do a verify. Well, that's pretty standard for MailChimp. It's nice that they care so much about keeping me safe. Ooh. I don't know. It's totally not over to be asked questions because I mean, you haven't been over here yet. Um, the game dev culture is actually really interesting here in London. Um, it seems mostly very friendly. Um, everyone I've spoken to has been pretty welcoming. There's been, there's been the occasional weirdness. And I, I think it's because um, it, game devs is a collective and this includes myself. So like no umbrage at all here. We are an awkward bunch of people <laughs> um, because we spend so, I think we spend a lot of time with machines as opposed to uh, people. Um, some of us are really, really good at, you know, being social, but a lot of us are just like, oh, hey, what's up? I'm going to go hide in the corner now. Um, and, you know, a lot of the game devs here are uh, men, um, more specifically, uh, you know, Caucasian men. Um, so I think some of them are a little bit awkward about, you know, dealing with female game devs because it's not a super common thing even now. And, you know, people of color who are also game devs are even less common. Um, I actually did a, uh, you remember that presentation I did like a year and a half ago about diversity in game development? Um, so yeah, I'm not the only woman by any means, but I am one of the few. So I think it's, it's a little bit, um, I don't feel like there's judgment. I just feel like there's, I'm unused to dealing with this type of person in this particular setting. So hopefully me being around will kind of help them adjust to dealing with a woman and a woman of color, um, you know, in those kinds of situations previously. Um, I, I think I got hit on a couple of times too. <laughs> um, not in like a weird way, but just, you know, and then I'm just like, oh no, you know, I gotta get a boyfriend. It's cool. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, oh, thank you. I had a lot of fun, you know, really doing that presentation. Everyone was just so receptive. Um, it was, it was very positive. Oh, finally got the verification code. Give me just a second, guys. Um, that being said, I did, I did just do an interview with, uh, the Game Dev London podcast and, uh, Roz was my interviewer. She was great. She works for, um, an institution called Games London. Um, Sarah, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> um, it's real. it's good to hear from you. I, I feel like, I, I think the last time I saw you was like, what, last summer? It's been like 10 months since I saw you. So yeah, been a minute. Um, where was I? Right, I was talking about Roz. So, uh, works for Games London, great institution. They help, you know, indie game devs kind of get up and running, introduce them to, you know, investors and grant funding and all that sort of thing. Um, so we, we had a pretty good natter about, you know, representation um, in, in the, the industry, um, but it was very encouraging for me to be interviewed by a woman who not only is very present in the games industry, but has like won awards in the local game industry. So I'm just like, this makes me so happy. Um, yeah, there's def going to be some eggshell walking now, um, which I sort of admittedly have mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, you know, obviously I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable when, you know, they're, they're talking to me, especially when they're talking about, you know, serious social issues. On the other hand, I have also felt pretty much my entire life, like I have to walk on eggshells, particularly around Caucasian folks. So I don't know if I feel like it's an entirely bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing for people to get, start getting used to thinking about what they say. 
before they say it. Um, but I do, I do hope that, you know, as, as a community, we're able to have constructive conversations about, you know, what's happening and, you know, how we can help, you know, as, as a community, rather than people feeling like they're being even further, you know, pushed, pushed away, if that makes sense. All right, so I did just um, get to the link for MailChimp. So sign up for our mailing list. Boom, there you go. Um, and our Patreon is here. If you feel like pitching a few bucks, awesome. Even if you can't, share it around, tell people what we're doing. If you're enthusiastic about it, um, every little bit helps, even word of mouth helps. Um, we issue a newsletter uh, once a month, um, approximately every 30 days. Sometimes I'll get busy and, you know, it'll be a few days off or a few days before, what have you. Um, but in the newsletter, you'll get updates about, you know, the, the various projects that we're working on um, and any sort of like, you know, need to know type of stuff, um, including ship dates. We will be putting ship dates in the newsletter as well as online. So if you want to stay in touch, feel free to sign up for our newsletter. Hopefully you will. Thank you. And, um, you know, just stay, stay up to date with what we're doing. More questions? I still got a little time. So just, just lay them on me. I did briefly mention uh, the Tech Valley Game Space. Um, they are also another excellent institution for you to support. Um, I feel like having gotten my start there, um, all of us really, um, Frederica is, or was, I think was slash is, one of the officers at, at the Game Space. It's where I first met her. Um, and it's also how I met uh, Mohua. Um, it's, there's just a lot of really fantastic, skilled, uh, dedicated people, um, and they're, they have a particular focus on diversity. Um, so I felt very welcome, you know, I didn't feel judged at all. Um, I remember my first Ludum Daria, I showed up and I was just like, hi, I want to make music for video games. And they're like, awesome, come on in. Um, so I've done, I've done a fair amount of work with them since that first Ludum Daria a couple of years ago, and they have given me a lot of advice, uh, mentoring, um, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely check them out. Um, they put on a lot of really fantastic programs even now. Um, and they're just, they're really wonderful people. So definitely give them your support and definitely show up to their events, especially if you are an aspiring or new game dev, they can and will help you. Um, to answer your question, Sarah, I moved to London in December. Um, I guess I, I can't, I can't really talk about that without things turning pretty serious. Um, so basically, we all know how things are in the States right now. Um, things are just god awful terrible. I'm just going to come right out and say it. Everything's terrible. Um, so I, I moved to the UK because I literally was worried and still am if I go back that I will be killed. So in addition to, you know, obviously in addition to being an African-American person, um, more particularly a woman, um, I'm very mouthy and sometimes that's good and sometimes it's bad. Um, but when you're mouthy enough that the Proud Boys start stalking you, that's not great. You know, I mean, after, after allowing for the fact that they are, you know, openly violent towards, you know, people of color, towards people who are Jewish, et cetera, et cetera, um, I very much got on their radar at some point in time. And that was part of the reason I decided to leave. Um, hey, Liz, thanks. Thanks for joining us. I, I will get to your question in a minute. Um, so I have, I have very mixed feelings about it. I do have an asylum application open right now. Um, hopefully I'll get a positive decision on that. Um, but what I've been doing since I've been away 
is, you know, just trying to inform and support people and especially to answer questions of people who are thinking about leaving themselves, you know, about what to do to prepare and all that sort of thing. Um, the bright side of all of this is that I do actually really like London. Um, I have friends here. Um, this is where I met my partner, you know, um, so I'm doing, I'm doing well here, but I feel like it's important to mention still that part of the reason I'm doing well is not having to be worried about being shot at <laughs> frees up a lot of mental bandwidth. Um, and it's kind of terrible that I have to say that out loud, but it is the truth. So there it is. Um, so Liz, to answer your question, um, how has the pandemic affected our game plans? I don't really feel like it has significantly. Um, I did know in one of my last interviews that we do tend to work better um, when we are able to physically be in each other's presence. Like, you know, Moho and I talked about this a couple of times where we're, when we're all able to get together and work in the same room, um, it helps our motivation. We can bounce ideas off each other. Um, we can help each other troubleshoot things. So it's really like, it is a very communicative team and, you know, being physically in each other's presence definitely helps us, um, you know, kind of streamline the work a little bit more. That being said, um, you know, we are still working remotely. We talk to each other regularly on Discord. We have regular meetings, um, you know, this sort of thing. So I think the work has slowed a bit, um, but it hasn't stopped us from producing. Um, that being said, I, it has given me a couple of ideas about, you know, the, how to talk about the mental impact that, um, you know, that the pandemic is having, um, especially on people who already suffer from mental illness. Um, like, I think it was yesterday, I, I was out walking with my partner and I had a really sorrowful moment because we were passing under a train trestle and I was watching a train go by and I realized that I hadn't been on a train in London. I used to take train all the time. We took the train into central London like every weekend to go to museums, art galleries, all that kind of thing. And I realized I hadn't taken a train in three months. And then I got to thinking about how long three months really seemed. It seems like it's been forever. And I just, I got really upset about it because, you know, I, I loved doing that stuff. I loved going to museums. I loved going to art galleries. I loved going out for bubble tea. I loved going out for sushi and ramen and, you know, all the normal stuff that people do. And I actually kind of cried a little bit because I was, I was just so sad about it. And those are things that I do, not just because they're fun, but like they really do help my mental state. They help me combat depression. Um, you know, they help me combat anxiety sometimes. It's just, it's a whole thing. So I, I definitely think there needs to be, you know, more dialogue about the impact that this is having, you know, on, on people's mental wellness, especially those who are already suffering from mental illness. Um, I'd like to think I'm doing okay, but, you know, I, I have, I have more days now where I'm so depressed that I just can't get anything done. So I know that's a little personal, but I think it's a reality for a lot of people. A lot of us are just having a hard time getting anything done. But um, I do have more days where I'm well than I expected. Um, you know, when, when the lockdown was announced, I thought it was just going to be a dumpster fire from start to finish, and it, it hasn't been. So I guess I'm coping better than I expected, and that's encouraging. Um, but I don't think that's true for everyone. So that might be a game at some point, or it might just be, you know, a dialogue we try to continue to have with people. Um, I have been, you know, saying, hey, like, you know, on, on our Facebook and such, like, are you doing okay? You know, talk to us if you want. Um, you know, we're, we're all in the same boat. So, you know, if you need if you need a space to talk about what's happening, like, you know, feel free. Um, and yeah, honestly, same, Mahua. Um, we have not talked about that, Stephanie. 
Um, I've definitely thought about it, but I, I think we're so busy working on, you know, those two front burner projects that I don't want to like overload, <laughs> um, you know, the, the three of us, me and Frederica and Mohua, um, you know, with, with, you know, something else. But I think maybe once we finish with Return to Self, um, that's something that, that we could talk about, um, particularly because this is likely to go on for some time. Um, this really isn't going to be over until we have, at bare minimum, a drug treatment, but ultimately it's not going to be over until we have a vaccine. Um, and that's going to take a while. Um, that being said, I have been reading uh, some articles about um, human trials being commenced for uh, vaccine formulas. Um, I think there's there's two institutions that have already commenced human trials. Um, I think Oxford should have an update by the end of this month, possibly by next week. Um, and I think, God, who is it? Johnson & Johnson is commencing human trials in uh, July. Um, they want to have a vaccine by the end of the year. I, I really hope they're not being overly optimistic. <laughs> um, but God, can you can you imagine? You know, if we had another, if we had a vaccine in six months, it's a little wild to think about. Um, but no, that that is a good idea, absolutely, Stephanie. We we should definitely have a dialogue about it. But in the meantime, um, at the very least, we'll continue to try to generate dialogue about you know just the mental impact it's having, and you know encourage people to get the help that they need in the meantime, while we're, you know, still producing. How are you guys doing? Is everyone okay? Healthy, physically, mentally, etc. What have you been doing? You know, while, uh, while we have all this time on our hands, because we're busy, you know, not going out. <laughs> Mm, mm. I'm with you, especially you know, given your uh, your recent circumstances, Steph. I uh, I definitely feel you on that. Um, to to answer your question, Sarah, my favorite part. Um, I think I have two favorite parts. You know, I'm I've been a musician for thirty years, and to be able to dedicate you know, a, a fair amount of my working hours um, to creating music for the, the work that we're doing, um, you know, and designing sounds for it, that sort of thing has been extraordinarily rewarding. You know, I'm never, I'm never not going to have a career just as a, um, you know, performing artist. And yeah, I feel you both, Sarah and Stephanie, definitely uh, just trying to live, you know, um, so yeah, it's just, it's been very rewarding. I'm always going to be a performing artist, but, you know, composing, um, is also a great love of mine. So, you know, it's just, it's very fulfilling. And even when I'm not, you know, working on music, um, when, you know, when I'm writing game documents or I'm writing narrative or I'm, you know, testing stuff, um, it makes me happy. And it's very important for me in particular to have a job that makes me happy. Um, the other favorite part has been just the, the responses that, that people give us uh, to our work. Um, it's, it's been really humbling. Um, we did a presentation at the Troy 100 Forum last year, and I was very surprised to be invited. Um, yeah, I know, right? Jeez, you gotta have your hands full. Um, so we we got invited to do the Troy 100 Forum, and we had just such an amazing response. You know, we we had a great response to the Open Spaces prototype, and then you know the the conception of the company just got a really great response. Um, and a couple of people um, commented that they were really proud to have a company like ours, you know, in Troy, just doing what we do. And I was just, I was so incredibly honored to hear that, you know, that, that people really value what we're doing and they, they believe in what we're doing. Um, 
and that what we're doing is is helping them has helped them so i can't i can't imagine anything better really it's it's always incredibly rewarding when when people love my work and you know when people appreciate you know all the work that you know the, the team has put in to make something meaningful um so yeah all all of the above um you know i haven't been doing as much art as i've really wanted to sarah i think I, i've been drawing a little bit more but what i really want to get want to get back to is painting i'm just going to get some painting supplies because i haven't painted anything i think since i left troy which is a little depressing <laughs> um but i i have uh i mentioned earlier i've been reading a lot um and i actually live near uh, a fair a fairly nice uh large green space with like lots of nice walking trails um so i've been walking a bit more as well and doing yoga <laughs> um so yeah just Sometimes I, I have the feeling that I'm just trying to distract myself from everything that's happening, but I don't think there's necessarily anything innately wrong with that. I, th I think you just gotta gotta make it through however you can, you know. So I'm, I'm just kind of at the point of if it makes me feel good, I'm just gonna do it because you know. But I'm glad you guys are okay. Um, it's just, it's such a wild time to be alive, you know? I feel like none of us ever expected to be living in the time that we're living in. You know, we're, we're dealing with a global pandemic at the same time that we are watching literally the largest civil rights movement in history. So we've got all 50 states are protesting now. All the territories are protesting I think there's like 21 different countries that have had protests now. So it's like, it's a big thing. Um, thank you. Um, so yeah, whatever, whatever we need to do to, to get through it and live through it, do the thing, just do the thing, you know? All right. I got five more minutes for you guys. So any, any last questions you want me to answer or you know, anything you guys want to add? Have you guys played open spaces? <laughs> I mean, obviously me and Moho I have, we've had to play it a million times because of the quality control testing, <laughs> but, oh, um, mm, that's a really good question, Moho. Uh, Game Dev has definitely helped me express myself creatively. Um, in addition to being a musician, I also really love to write. Um, I've actually written a few books <laughs> at this point in time. Um, so it's really, it's really great to, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, be able to engage with those parts of my creative personality. <laughs> I hear that too. Um, and it has, it has helped with my mental illness, um, for a couple of different reasons. The first being that, you know, I am able to help other people who are suffering, um, and that makes me feel good. I think the other reason is, how do I put this? I think it's more to do with and just how, how I've managed things in general. Like, you know, I, I very much try to regard, um, you know, any project or any, you know, group that I'm, you know, in charge in for lack of a better description as effectively a democracy. So, I try to listen to people and, you know, take their ideas, um, you know, and, and implement them as, as best I can. Um, but I also am very much of the opinion that work should serve your life, not the other way around. You know, I, I don't live to work. So having the ability to say, you know what, I am not up to doing anything today besides laying in bed and crying and watching Netflix, I can do that. If one of my colleagues comes to me and says, I'm having a really hard time of things right now. Um, I just, I really just need some time off. I say, okay, you do that. You know, we'll, we'll be here when you're ready to come back. Um, I'm having family problems. I've got this other project I'm working on. Cool. Do what you got to do. So I think, 
I think having that kind of freedom has definitely helped me. Um, you know, knowing that no one's gonna, no one, it, no one is gonna judge me if I need to take a few days off or even a few weeks off. Um, you know, to to get myself right so I can get my head back in the game, pun intended. Um, lastly, and this sounds like a, a sort of weird thing that you know has helped me, but I, I was thinking about you know the work that I do last week, and I realized that. I have effectively worked myself out of any other position that I could ever be hired for. And it, literally because I, I, I own a company, <laughs> you know, I've, I've been, I've been on the entrepreneurial track for a long time. Um, you know, I started working as an independent musician about 15 years ago. I started doing, um, you know, I started a freelance business like five years ago and now it's just, I am firmly in the self-employment category, uh, no matter what. So, you know, imagine, imagine like running a company and then just having it not work out and then interviewing for a job and then going, well, what'd you do wrong? <laughs> you know, like trying to explain that. So it does sort of sound like it's put me up on a bit of a ledge, cognitively speaking, but it also has a curious kind of freedom because I'm doing what I want to be doing. And as long as, you know, I'm doing the work that I need to make what I'm doing a success and what the team is doing a success, um, I have an odd kind of freedom. So it's, it doesn't sound like it should help my mental state, but it does. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't know why. I think it's just that feeling of, settling into the groove that you are supposed to be in, if that makes any kind of sense. Does that make sense? Or is it a little too, uh, am I being obtuse? <laughs> I really can't tell. Right. What else? Any any last questions before I hit the road? I'm really I'm so excited that you guys could join us today. So you know, thanks for thanks for leaping in. Um, it's it's honestly really pleasant to be able to to talk to you guys like this. Um, so you know, hopefully you'll you'll join us for the next Q and A. Um, but again, you can submit questions to. Hang on. So you can submit questions for next month's episode uh, to queenjipgamestudio at gmail.com. Um, I look forward to your questions. If you think of anything you, um, you really, really, really want to know, definitely pop it over and I'll make sure to get to it. Um, I love you too. <laughs> I miss you so much. The world is so crazy. You know, but I'm, I'm thinking of you guys and, you know, I'm, I'm wishing you safety and love and all the good stuff from afar. Um, so definitely keep in touch and I'll hopefully at some point see all of you in person again. Um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.